short, short of time, uh, maybe uh, will be no, not enough uh, time to discuss uh, my presentation. How to improve current system of interlanguage links, uh, uh, which are co colloquially uh, referred as uh, uh, interwiki, but uh, more, more correct term is uh, interlanguage uh, links uh, in Wikipedia. I propose uh, some uh, approaches. Uh, these, are, uh, these are only approaches, but not ready to use uh, solutions. Uh, this approach uh, uh, should be, uh, of course, uh, this approach uh, sh should be discussed. Uh, three major things uh, that uh, we can do. Uh, we can uh, extend and uh, refine uh, uh, the structure of uh, uh, interlanguage uh, links. Uh, this is uh, the first. Uh, uh, second uh, thing uh, is uh, to introduce uh, some uh, semantics uh, into uh, interwiki because uh, uh, currently bots uh, are only uh, check uh, some, some data or maybe uh, namespaces, but uh, 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 bots uh, do not check information uh, which, uh, which may be useful to avoid uh, some mistakes. Uh, and uh, uh, third, thi third thing is uh, uh, to simplify uh, the structure. Uh, it's, uh, usually uh, presented as uh, to create uh, some uh, central database, uh, but uh, I'm not fo f focusing on uh, this uh, uh, way uh, because uh, uh, there are, uh, this is already dis discussed. What we currently have, uh, usually uh, we have a direct link from an article to another article. Uh, sometimes uh, we may see um, a link uh, to article sections. Uh, it's usually uh, it uh, appears when uh, 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 an article is uh, uh, merged and uh, replaced by a redirect uh, to a section. And uh, uh, then uh, bots uh, uh, change uh, such uh, interlanguage links to links uh, to sections to a section of an article. Uh, also, we can use links uh, to redirect to articles, but uh, you, it uh, it is uh, uh, now it is of little uh, usability because. Uh, Bots uh, do change uh, such uh, links uh, uh, directly to target articles. But uh, uh, redirects are uh, uh, the thing uh, uh, which is underestimated. Uh, uh, there are redirects uh, just uh, to aliases or uh, uh, synonyms uh, of words, but uh, uh, there are also so named redirects with possibility. So name it in English Wikipedia. Uh, usually it is a redirect uh, from a redirect to a general notion from uh, some uh, narrow topic uh, which uh, uh, does not have yet uh, uh, an article. And uh, I think uh, 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 that uh, such links should uh, not, these redirects should not be substituted uh, to in interwiki links uh, and uh, also in uh, all links. Uh, uh, until recently, uh, uh, there was no, no, 
no pro, uh, provision for uh, this situ situation in Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia's ma manual of style, but uh, now it is uh, added uh, that uh, it is uh, a bad style to link uh, directly to sections uh, in some situation uh, links to redirects are better because uh, in the future it is uh, m more uh, easily uh, fixable. Uh, it is technically possible now uh, to place an interwiki, an interlanguage link to a redirect page itself, uh, but e these uh, links, uh, the, uh, these links are unusable uh, because uh, no one uh, c usually can reach. Uh, what? Uh, no one uh, usually uh, reaches uh, the redirect page. Uh, themselves. Uh, they uh, uh, users uh, view a target page. Uh, but uh, I propose uh, to introduce a links, uh, no, no, for example, interlanguage links from sections of articles. Uh, a year ago, uh, I created uh, a template uh, in English, Wikipedia, Russian, and uh, s something else, uh, maybe, but uh, now it is invisible. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, the purpose of uh, this uh, template is uh, uh, to host uh, uh, links uh, which uh, uh, lead from sections uh, uh, to which uh, def uh, define a correspondence of uh, this section, article section, to uh, some uh, uh, target, uh, usually art, uh, uh, an article of uh, another language. Uh, a few uh, words about uh, semantics. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the, there are topics uh, which is uh, 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 difficult to classify, but uh, the bulk of uh, articles, uh, most numerous articles, uh, are articles of uh, some uh, uh, well-defined uh, type, uh, uh, such as uh, films uh, or uh, persons or uh, uh, biological species or, or uh, chemical substances. Uh, uh, there are uh, many articles uh, which uh, can be classified and uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, using some uh, ra random keys uh, for su such articles, uh, for example, when uh, uh, we will build a s central uh, interlanguage Linux database, uh, we may uh, use uh, existing existence uh, keys uh, such uh, as an, uh, uh, n such as uh, Latin names uh, uh, of uh, biological species uh, uh, or uh, IMDB uh, numbers uh, of uh, uh, films, uh, etc. Uh, also, uh, this is uh, this may be used for uh, geographical objects. Uh, five minutes? Oh, okay, uh, I, will, I will finish in time. Uh, also, uh, we uh, can check uh, correctness of uh, such links using uh, geographical coordinates uh, because I know, know at least two, two cases. Uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, were, were, were much more uh, of a blatantly incorrect uh, bending of uh, uh, different towns uh, uh, because only because uh, uh, there is a language where uh, the names are the same. Uh, I will not speak uh, much about uh, this, uh, but uh, I'm uh, convinced uh, uh, that uh, any uh, centralized uh, uh, structure uh, should uh, be uh, prepared to use uh, uh, some extended features uh, as uh, these features uh, uh, that uh, I'm talking about, uh, such as uh, li links uh, to uh, uh, redirect uh, with uh, possibilities. Uh, uh, this means to uh, 
no non-existent currently articles, but articles uh, which are likely to be created in uh, the future, uh, and uh, maybe links uh, to and uh, from sections. Uh, also, uh, there are uh, some uh, technical problems uh, where we, uh, which uh, we we have uh, to, uh, to solve. Uh, first, uh, uh, in uh, MediaWiki database, uh, uh, there is no table for inbound links. Only outgoing links uh, are, uh, uh, we can find in the database. So if uh, uh, I uh, want to, uh, to know something about uh, incoming uh, links, uh, I uh, have uh, to query hundreds of uh, databases of, uh, uh, of uh, each language I uh, have uh, uh, to uh, make a, uh, a query. Uh, second, uh, uh, mm, by Wikipedia uh, uh, has a model in interwiki and uh, uh, it uh, uh, creates uh, edit summaries such as uh, uh, some uh, links are added or re removed, uh, but uh, uh, it is not mentioned why some links are added or removed uh, from which uh, of languages uh, uh, this information uh, uh, is uh, uh, retrieved. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is inconvenient to uh, f find a source of uh, a mistake. Thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, we have uh, several minutes for, for questions, uh, maybe. This is uh, m most useful uh, uh, if uh, we uh, can, uh, uh, if we have an un underdeveloped uh, uh, Wikipedia in the some uh, language uh, which uh, uh, m merges uh, many uh, terms, uh, which are which uh, have uh, separate articles in English Wikipedia, for example. Uh, it uh, may be used uh, to make uh, links uh, to English Wikipedia directly to separate English articles uh, from each sections in uh, a Wikipedia uh, which merged this, uh, 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 this content uh, because, uh, uh, because uh, there are, uh, there are too, too little content. Uh, my answer, answer. Okay. And other questions? Shabbat uh, shalom. Thank you for coming here so early in the morning. My name is Amit. I'm uh, here uh, on behalf of the University of Amsterdam and the Netherlands Institute for Bild and Cloud for Sound and Vision. Um, and I'm going to present a project called uh, COSINE. COSINE is a research project funded by the European Union. Um, and its title is Multilingual Content Synchronization with Wikis. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is first of all explain to you what multilingual content synchronization uh, is all about. So some words about motivation. And then uh, I'm going to touch on the research challenges that we are dealing with. And then finally I will talk about the use cases and show a short demo that shows the uh, status of the development of that project. Uh, the project is uh, 
is run by a consortium of seven partners. So we have uh, four research, research institutes, including the University of Amsterdam, uh, Fondazione Bruno Kessler, it's a research institute in Italy, in Trento, the University of uh, Dublin City University in Ireland, and the Heidelberg Institute for Theoretical Studies in Germany. And there are three end user partners, uh, including uh, Deutsche Welle, uh, broadcaster of news on radio, television, and internet uh, from Germany, and the Netherlands Institute for uh, Sound and Vision. This is the Dutch archive for radio and television uh, content, and the media, the Wikimedia chapter of the Netherlands. So let's state the objective of the project. Um, COSINE is supposed to build a system uh, for synchronizing wiki pages in multiple languages and for maintaining the consistency of the content among those languages while those pages are edited. Now, before I start talking about how we are thinking of doing that, um, let me give you just uh, start starting with some motivation. So what I'm going to give now, these are two examples. These are made up examples, but they are supposed to uh, trigger your imagination about what you could do if you could uh, synchronize content uh, across uh, languages of, in wikis. So we talk about um, three uh, ideas. The two first ones are the, the, the interesting ones. One is if we think about domains where the content should be the same in all languages, and we want to keep the content uh, consistent. So every change that will be on one language, we want to see on the other languages. It is not true for, for any domain. If you think about Wikipedia, it could be true for some uh, domains, maybe technical information, these kind of things. The other idea is uh, imagine that you speak one language and you are interested in what users in other languages just say about the same subject. So maybe you don't want to change the page, but you're just curious to see um, what other people in other parts of the world, world say about the same subject. And the last case, it's uh, some kind of a trivial case, but it, it also belongs to the project. If, if we try to synchronize uh, a page that exists in one language and there is nothing on the other language, synchronizing trivially means translating the whole page to the new language. So here are my examples. I start with soccer. So a couple of months back, there was the finals of the Champion League. And uh, it was a game in uh, London, Barcelona against Man Manchester United. Barcelona won, and it was a game where uh, a Dutch famous uh, goalkeeper played his last game at the age of, of 40. And I look at Wikipedia uh, changes following that game. So already, while the game was going on, there was an update on the English Wikipedia saying uh, Van der Sar, the goalkeeper, played his last game, uh, defeated 3-1. Uh, um, a few hours later, there was a change on the Italian Wikipedia stating the same thing. A few hours later, on the German Wikipedia, again, the change that says the same thing. The Dutchies were shocked because they lost, the, not the Dutchies, the, the Dutch keeper lost. They waited until the next day, one o'clock, and only then they made the same change, saying that uh, the goalkeeper played his last game with the results of the game. So one idea of keeping content consistent among languages, once the first change was made by an English user, um, a system that will go and automatically pick up on this change and, and transfers that to the Italian, the German, and the Dutch uh, pages. And of course, triggering watch lists that will let actual users look at the change and maybe change it, correct it, remove it, as it happens with uh, changes of, of, on Wikipedia. A second idea, this is following the second uh, point of motivation. Assume that I am uh, an uh, English uh, reader and I read the page about Amsterdam. Uh, and I think, well, say that I don't speak Dutch, and I wonder what Dutch people say about their capital. So assume that I have this kind of synchronization button, and I can start uh, seeing different types of information. So some, type, some, some information is exactly the same between the two uh, pages. Some information could appear um, in English, but in, on the Dutch page there will be more details. I want to pick up on those things. So the Dutch uh, page gives a little bit more details. Some information could appear only on the Dutch page, and it doesn't appear at all on the English page. And also vice versa. Some information, from some, for some reason, appears only on the English page and not on the Dutch page. And obviously, there could be also contradictions. So information that is not the same. And then I might, but not necessarily, want to take some actions, uh, append the information that is uh, missing, or replace some information, resolve some contradictions. 
So th these are the motivations for thinking of why you want to do content synchronization and why we want, why we want to also uh, incorporate automatic tools that will help us do that. But in order to do that, this is a difficult uh, problem. And we have uh, a list of resource challenges that we have to uh, try and resolve. So there are different domains of research. And the Cosine project is trying to put them all together. Um, each research domain is also supported by different research, research institutes. And we try to build a system that incorporates all of them together. So I'm going to try and go through, through the synchronization process as we see it in Cosine. Assume that uh, we have uh, two pages that, that are connected via interwiki links. Let's say that one is uh, in German and the other one is in uh, English. And a user makes a change on the, in on the German page. So th the first uh, step would be to try and classify the type of uh, change. So to say, did the meaning change? Or, or maybe this is just a change of style or, or something that we don't want to move to the other page. Uh, assuming that we we are, we are going to take two different passes, two different actions uh, according to this classification. So assuming that we decided that there was a factual change, a change of meaning, um, then we start the process wh which starts with the structural, structural analysis of the wiki pages. Uh, this analysis is supposed to decide which segments of the page, the page could be quite long, we want to compare, trying to focus on the regions that are uh, relevant to the change also give us instruction of how to reconstruct the, the, the change when we want to add it to the English page, because we want to keep the same formatting, the same links, everything it has to do with wiki text. And we want also to decide where to put the change, because to find a, a good insertion point. Next, we take the change and we do something that is called, uh, in research terminology, uh, cross-lingual content entailment, which means we try to decide which parts of the text are equivalent. So for equivalent parts, we are not going to do anything. But if we find information that is more specific on the German side, we want to add those details to the English side. If we find text that is completely unrelated, we certainly want to translate the, the new information into the, new, the other language. And if we come across contradictions, we are not sure what to do, and we want to apply some mechanism to consult with the user and get a, a response what to do. For the parts that we decided to, uh, to move from the German page to the English page, we are going to apply machine translation and propose a machine translation result to the user. And uh, this could be the suggestion of what content should be synchronized and added to the English page. Now, I go back a couple of slides and talk about the case where we decided that the change, so let's, let's assume that this pass was taken and some change, uh, machine translation result output was proposed to the English user. Now, machine we don't expect the machine translation result to be perfect. So we assume that the English user will look at that and then correct the machine translation result, providing a better uh, version of that information. If we... This is uh, still open for uh, the, the, this implementation data is, is open for, for the. I'm going to talk about it with the use cases because different organizations might want to suggest different solutions for how they do that. I'm, I'm going to go back to that point. But just from, from the synchronization point of view, assume that there is an output of a machine translation that was su suggested on the, on the English side and the user provides a better uh, translation, a correction of that translation. Classifying that as a fluency change, a change that improves the quality of the language, will be sent directly to the machine translation uh, component in order to do what we call self-learning machine translation. So improve the, the model in order not to repeat the same mistake in the future. So th that's the overall uh, idea, and also a list of all the challenges that we are trying to deal with in that project. Now, where, where we stand, and I'm going to, to talk about use cases uh, in a moment, um, in the course of the project, the project uh, is a project of three years. We are now approaching a year and a half, not yet. Um, so three prototypes are going to be developed. The first one has been released a few months ago. And it is cur currently deployed on private wikis of our uh, end user partners of the project. The target languages are European languages, namely English, German, uh, Italian, and Dutch. 
with uh, Bulgarian and Turkish as uh, additional languages that will be uh, looked at. And I cannot talk about synchronizing content without mentioning machine translation quality, especially when we want to talk with Wikipedians. So uh, there's a great deal of effort uh, in this project give, given to evaluation work. One of the partners is doing only evaluation work, comparing the Cosine machine translation system with four other systems, including Google Translation, Bing, Microsoft, and two rule-based systems, uh, Sistran and Bubblefish. And we have already a baseline of evaluation. Um, the system is uh, somewhere at the level of, of Microsoft Bing, uh, less than Google Translate, better than the rule-based systems. Now, I, I say that, and this might be meaningful for research uh, uh, people. If I tell that to Wikipedians, some of them say, well, Google Translate is not good enough, I cannot work with that. It, I'm reluctant to even try to use that. So I want to emphasize the point that there is a process of ongoing improvement here. And uh, by correcting machine translation outputs, by, by humans, by users, the, the computers get better models and constantly improve the results. And uh, maybe the, the main advantage of this project is that we, we do that in a collabor collaborative and an open environment, in a wiki environment. So everything that is done in this project is, is open source, and not only open source in the sense of software, but open data. If you correct but commercial systems um, offer to users to correct their translations on the internet. This information usually disappears somewhere in the computers of the commercial system. Uh, in this project, since it's a European and research project, all the corrections are open to any uh, research uh, project, this project and future projects. <coughs> so finally, let's talk about use cases and show something of where we stand. So, there are two uh, use cases that we use at the moment. One is of the uh, Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. Uh, they have a wiki which is mainly in Dutch, and the idea is to uh, expand the Dutch text into other European languages because they are involved in some European projects and they want to give access to more uh, users to their data. The data is about television programs, radio, actors, and cul cultural, let's say, cultural uh, data. Um, the second one, which I'm going to focus on now, is the one of uh, Deutsche Welle. This is a broadcaster, so uh, their information includes news items uh, of all kinds, but uh, we focus on a specific uh, case. Uh, there is a website called Calendar Blatt, Today in History. So um, for each day of the year, there is a, a list of uh, subjects, uh, topics, uh, events that happen on that day, and uh, birthdays. It's very similar to uh, the welcome pages that you see on the Wikipedia. Uh, and the information is given in German and in English, and Deutsche Welle has a, a group of editors that are working constantly on both languages. So the, so the objective of, of, of this user, user case is to keep the content uh, synchronized, giving cosign to those editors as a helping tool in their work. I'm going to show you uh, a quick example, a short one. So suppose that uh, we have a German editor that adds a birthday of a Spanish uh, painter, and uh, the text includes the two sentences. This is a Spanish uh, Baroque, uh, from the Spanish painter from the Baroque times, and he, well, he was born in uh, Sevilla in Spain. And uh, <coughs> the way it works, and this answers your question, because this is the way Deutsche Welle wanted to work. It's not necessarily the way Wikipedia will or yeah, want to work when it comes to that. Um, but the way it works, the, the editor triggers the system. So the, it doesn't happen automatically, but the, the, and once it triggers the system, the result is registered on the wiki. This is their private wiki on the English side. So there was, I, I didn't emphasize that, but there was no, no English page connected to that page in the beginning, and at the end there is an English page uh, that is created, the system creates the inter wiki links, which is not a big deal, but just uh, to, to make the work smooth. Um, and the system adds this uh, message box saying, uh, this is a computer generated uh, uh, text, and the editor is asked to improve the translation, correct it, verify it. Um, so, What we do next, uh, the editor would, would uh, just open the page and edit that and uh, 
and uh, create a better version of the translation, the system will keep the two versions and use that as information for better translation in the future. Now let's, let's, let's go to the more interesting part, the synchronization part. So now assume that we have, as in the example I told you about before, a German page and an English page, and they are both linked. And a German editor just adds new information to the German side. So the edit consists of some additional details to the second sentence here, saying that the painter was uh, born to a family of uh, so-and-so children, and a new sentence that did not exist before. And now the German editor triggers the system by triggering the system, the, by clicking on the link to, to Cosine. And Cosine will create a new uh, English version, which is a synchronized version with the German change. So it will pick up on the edits of, of, of the German editor and will suggest a, a new version. Now, if we go and, and look at the um, edit, the diff of, of that version, we see that uh, the first sentence has not been changed. That was the sentence where the system decided that the content is equivalent. The second sentence is a sentence where the system decided there is more detail, there are more details on the German side. So some details were added. And the third sentence was completely non-existent on the, on the English side, it, a translation of that sentence was added. Now the translation is not good enough and the German editor will go and, and uh, correct that. I will conclude with uh, the last use case, the use case of uh, Wikimedia, the, the Netherlands chapter of Wikimedia. So this use case is something that we are going to uh, work on in the next year, in 2012. And there are several options of which content to use as a good content for uh, for synchronization. And we consider uh, several options, including uh, help pages, manuals, some technical, uh, uh, technical content. The languages will be uh, English, German, uh, Dutch, and Italian. And we are, have a mailing list uh, where we're going to publish and actually tell users that want to participate and get involved uh, when it starts and uh, what we actually propose people to do. So, I will conclude by that. The website of Cosine is cosine.eu, and on that website you have a link to the mailing list, and in that mailing list you'll get updates of our uh, Wikimedia uh, use case. Thank you. Questions? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, um, so the, the components that will need to be supported, uh, the, the, the question was uh, is assuming that uh, we have a machine translation uh, component or, or, or a system that supports other languages, will we have to change other components of Cosine in order to uh, provide content synchronization? Yeah. yeah. So the, the part that we call content entertainment uh, does some semantic analysis of, of the text. And now the research area of cross-lingual content entertainment is a new research area. So if you go to research publications, there have been uh, competitions in the last six years, something like that, of comparing English to English. Yeah? So you get a sentence, you get another sentence, and you have to say equivalent, contradiction, more details here or there. Uh, the area of multilingual content element is a new research area, and this is something that will pick up in a certain way in the, in the next years, including additional languages. But uh, I do believe that there, there is some syntactical and semantical uh, analysis involved, which makes it, uh, to a certain extent, uh, language dependent. Um, just maybe to say another point, uh, a straightforward uh, solution or workaround to that problem is, is to go uh, through English using the um, translation. But this adds more noise to the system. Thanks. Mm 
Um, at the long run, uh, this is the intention, but uh, this is really a research prototype. It is not uh, mature enough to go there. Okay, I think that the, one of the, um, the, the way the project goes, there are three years, there are three prototypes, and after each prototype there is an evaluation session. Now the evaluation is, is about the, the, the quality, but also about the user uh, feedback. And this user feedback is, is used in order to decide what uh, the best user interface or possibilities should be. So, yeah. When I say actual community, I, I mean two things. Uh, first, we have the two uh, end user partners, which each, each of one is a, an organization. So there are users working for that organization that give the feedback. But the third user. Yeah, 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 yeah. The answer is yes. Uh, yeah. For the third use case here, the, what I talk about here, yeah. this, this is open to the community. What do you mean by point of views? Say, uh, if, if there is an organization uh, which is more than uh, even one of these can be called a terrorist organization in one country, and the other country can be called a content wise. Of course. Yeah, so uh, how do you handle this? Uh, synchronizing is not good always. Uh, yeah, you you're right. I, I talked about it in the beginning. The, the question was how, how to deal with different point of views on the same uh, content. Yeah. So, user thinks differently about. In the beginning, when I talked about the motivation, I said that uh, in certain domains, we consider uh, the content to be the, it should be the same um, across all languages. More usually, when we talk about technical uh, domains, uh, help pages is the example that we think of using, or even uh, soccer because these are <laughs> just details. You know, if a team won, the team won. But if it's political or anything else, we will not go to apply uh, automatic uh, synchronization. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I know. Uh, this is something to agree with. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think I I, I had a few. So all, all the questions are, uh, are in the direction, I repeat the questions in, in, in a paraphrase, all the questions are in the direction of how we are going to use such a tool in the context of uh, broad Wikipedia. Uh, the tool is good by itself, by using Wikipedia, you have to a lot of things. Yeah. So private wiki is stronger. Indeed, indeed. So first I agree. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just answer and stop. Okay. So uh, first, I, I, I completely agree. And I had a few uh, discussions in the last two days with uh, Wikipedians exactly about that point. And the solution should be in a way that um, eventually uh, a user is the one that uh, commits the changes and not an automatic tool uh, adds changes without uh, any supervision. Now, there are different ways to think about that. but. Uh, because at the same time, we also want to collect the, the corrections of the machine translation in order to improve machine translation. So we try to, to somehow find a solution that combines both. So have a commit with a user name on each commit. That is the problem. You cannot use UK as a testing ground to improve your tool. Okay. We have to, uh, yeah. we can take that uh, further. I think we have to conclude. Yeah. There's another question. Yeah, okay. Thank you. My bot on my edits from my bot, Cheeky Bot, which is doing interwiki links so in, in all the languages. And that's why I see that, well, bots currently have to do many, many changes in order to update Wikipedias and in order to update interwiki links between Wikipedias. And I think we need a, a better approach for this. Uh, well, that's we can look at this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, so currently we have more than 280 languages of Wikipedia, and there are lots of pages in each of these Wikipedias. So there are many, many links to, to connect all these, all these pages and all these Wikipedias, and there are also more projects on Wikimedia. So 
interweek links connecting same content on different wikis are many many links so uh, well, it doesn't make any sense, too much sense without seeing the slides but yeah yeah i can see that yeah The main shortcomings of the current system. I will show a possible approach to improve this, and I will finish the work by concluding it and summarizing it. So, well, as I said, I'm the user Chiki and Chiki bot as a bot, a globally flagged bot doing interwiki links, and we have many, many Wikipedia's and many, many pages and so many links connecting them. So we have different pages in each wiki, and we we need to connect. Con same content in different wikis in such a way that we have links from a content to the same content in another wiki, as you probably know, in the wiki links. But, and this would be an incorrect wiki, li wiki link because it's connecting to a different content. And looking further in many pages in different Wikipedias, we have different graphs of pages that pages with the same content that are connected between them, pages in different wikis. And, well, in this case, we, this would be a correctly connected graphs with the same contents. And this is, for instance, a problem with interwiki links where there, are, there is an incorrect link that is linking from a topic to another topic, to the blue pages, to the yellow pages in this case. And there is also a, a page that is unlinked. It's not connected to any other pages, so it's missed and it's not has no interwiki links to, to other pages. So looking at this, I will show what are the main problems of the current interwiki li linking system. And I think the main problem is that currently we have to, we need to copy to replicate all the, all the interwiki links to all the Wikipedias, all the pages where of the graph. For instance, the United States, the article United States is available in 240 languages. So this means that we have adding up all the interwiki links or all this graph, we have more than 57,000 <laughs> interwiki links. So this is a real problem. We have each of the pages is linking to all another 239 pages. And well, I will show now what other problems created from, from this system. I think there are mainly two problems. One of, this, one of the problems is that we are flooding the page histories of the pages. We have many, many interwiki link edits that are not useful for the content. And on the other hand, hand as we have interwiki links replicated in each of the pages, we have differences, so we have inconsistencies where not all of them are, are updated in the same time. So going more in depth in these problems, the first problem, problem of flooding page histories well, here we can see, I don't know if you can see it correctly, but we have an example of a page that has many, many interwiki link edits that are not useful for the user who is looking for, for the history of the content. So it's impossible to see what is the, the history of the, the changes in the content. And on the other hand, uh, another important problem, the second problem uh, I told before, is inconsistencies among interwiki links that, that come from many reasons, like, uh, well, a bot may be blocked in one of the languages, so the bot is updating the interwiki links in, in all the Wikipedias, but it's not updating in one of them, so it's, there are inconsistencies because one of them is not updated. Uh, also, when users move pages from a title to another title, maybe sometimes bots cannot update it correctly because there is a new content in the old title, so bots are not aware that this change happened, and so are linking to an incorrect page. And also, for instance, in the Icelandic Wikipedia, they have set uh, a limit of edits for bots in order not to, in order not to flood the page histories. And this also creates some problems, like you cannot edit because you you passed the limit and when you cannot continue editing and interwiki links in Icelandic Wikipedia are many times unupdated. 
So no update in interwiki links creates inconsistencies, creates changes, that, uh, differences between Wikipedias that are creating many, many problems for automated bots and for handling these interwiki links. So I think a problem for this is to create a different kind of graph, uh, a, a possible solution, sorry, is that to create a different kind of graph, uh, it's not necessary to have each of the pages in the graph connecting to the all the others, so that we can have a meta wiki or some other meta Wikipedia where we have the links connecting all the pages and we don't need to replicate all the, all the links from wiki to wiki. So we have, if we have a central wiki where all the links are available, we can just update this, this wiki, this central wiki and the other pages have no, have no interwiki links in them. So it's easier to, m to update and it's easier to have a more consistent system. So with this, with this solution, we, will, we would have some possible, some advantages. We have no replication, so we have just one, the data in just one place, so it's not, there are no inconsistencies. It's much easier to edit, it's much easier to update it because we don't need to, uh, for instance, for the United States, if there is a new link, we need to update in 240 pages. And with this new system, we only need to update it once in the, in the meta wiki. Also, we exclude the interwiki links from the page content. It's not really content, and users who are contributing to Wikipedia don't need to see the interwiki links. So it's, e it's also easier to, to edit, and it also is out of the page history, so it's much easier to, to see the history and changes in the content of the pages. Another advantage is that, that the page histories are not flooded, as I thought before. Uh, well, also bots don't need to have a flag in each of the wikis as currently need, so bots are not blocked either in, the, in these wikis, and it's, n it's enough that if the user, if the bot has, has the permissions, per permission to, to edit in this meta wiki and not in the other wikis, it's not necessary. <coughs> well, and also like it happens in the Icelandic, Icelandic Wikipedia, there's no need to edit, to set any edit limits for a bot, so you can freely make changes in the, in the meta wiki. So this system should also go, try to go further. This is the first approach, but I think that we should also consider further for the future some, some other features like, well, checking page moves. When a page is moved, and for instance, a new page with a disambiguation page is created in the old title, the system should, should be aware of this change and notify the interwiki links system to to make the change, well, if this page was here, now it's here, we'll change it in the meta wiki and should link to the new page. And, uh, okay, uh, this would solve that the interwiki links would not link to the, to the old titles. And also, uh, well, this, this would change how users input the interwiki links on, on the Wikipedias. And, well, I think it's important that Wikipedia should encourage users to, to add interwiki links, but not in the content, should be out of the content. And this could be really interesting, but in such a way that the user has a different input box to put the interwiki link, just one is enough because the system knows how to find the others when you have the graph already created. And would, it would be also interesting to, to show the user uh, a preview of the interwiki link that the user is adding because maybe the user is not completely sure that it's adding the correct interwiki link sometimes. So, well, is this the page that you wanted to connect to? And, well, I think this, uh, this, all this would be really a great solution. So, summarizing the idea as I told, I think there are two problems in the current interwiki linking system due to the replications, replications between languages. One of them is that we are flooding 
the page histories with interwiki dates by bots, and also that we have inconsistencies many times because of the differences of interwiki links in each of the pages. So, uh, and the first, uh, first approach would be to, to have a meta wiki where we have the interwiki links and no need to, to have in, uh, interwiki links in the content of each of the wikis. Uh, well, I, I would also like to comment that I've seen another similar approach in meta wiki that is trying to also change the current interwiki link system to, by creating a center wiki. It's somehow different to my approach, but I think we should also consider it, consider it and take a look at how this works in order to improve and relax this problem we have in Wikipedia. Thank you so much. That's all from my part. If you have any questions. Ah, yeah. Well, he was asking about about uh, when a user is navigating, I see. When a user is browsing a, wiki a Wikipedia page, if the user would be able to see what are the other pages, what are the interwikis related to to the page that the user is browsing. Yeah? Okay. Okay, this this would work in a similar way to to commons with for images with figures. Uh, we have a, a meta wiki where there are the figures, the images, and these images are included in as many Wikipedias as we want. So interwiki linking system would be the same, should be the same, because it's a common information for all the wikis we have there. So the, the, we, each of the Wikipedias would have would take the information from from this from this meta wiki and. Yes, for the user, for the for the user who is browsing, for the user who is navigating, it should be the same. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. It's just for for the e editing. Yeah. Well. It wasn't me. Nadek and this is Gurudat Bantwalkar. We are from India. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm an editor on Kannada Wikipedia and uh, I contribute to uh, English Wikipedia as well. I also contribute to uh, Wikimedia Commons. I've been an editor for like seven years now and uh, I was also one of the founders of Wikimedia India. Uh, I work on outreach. My primary area of focus and interest is Kannada language and so uh, all the languages that are in and around the state uh, that is clo closely attached with Can Canada and Konkani also happens to be one. And uh, well, we're going to talk about uh, 
the InterScript transliteration or uh, the, the transliteration tool that uh, we're working on for uh, uh, Konkani language and languages uh, like that. Also, uh, let me give an introduction of Guru. Guru is a researcher with uh, World Konkani Center, which is based in Mangalore. It's a nonprofit which is uh, working on uh, improving the language, working on promoting the language and uh, preserving the uh, traditional and cultural aspects of the Konkani community. All right, so before we start off, uh, we had uh, several discussions yesterday uh, where, we did, where, where there were mentions of uh, languages which need more than one writing system or scripts to uh, you know, uh, ensure that all the communities speaking this lang the language is involved in uh, any project like Wikipedia or Wikidictionary uh, uh, or Wikibooks, the projects where uh, all the communities uh, are to be uh, brought together. Well, there are languages in India too where the language is spoken in different regions and thus the language is written in more than one script, a whole different writing system and a whole uh, different script. And how do we get these people together? These language communities aren't large. The split up because of the usage in the script is rather significant. So we'll explore this and we'll see how we can bring them together and improve these, uh, these projects and uh, the, the, the thus bring together the communities. Thanks. Right. To some of the uh, problem that we are uh, working on, uh, just, just to summarize it, is just this. In case of Konkani itself, Konkani language itself, the language is spoken in several uh, regions with, in the coastal India, the, the, e eastern, the, the western uh, coast. So what happens is that in the state of Maharashtra, the language is uh, written using Devanagari script. In the state of Karnataka, the language is written using Kannada script. In the state of Kerala, the language is written using Malayalam script. And that's a problem. There is no sharing of knowledge between these communities whatsoever for all these decades. There has been no uh, sharing of knowledge at all. And the language communities, communities split because of this. But now, technology, this is possible. And we have a wonderful thing called Wikipedia, which also enables us to bring these people together or in a community. So let's explore this. All right. So Guru, being a linguist uh, he, uh, and, a, and a writer, he'll uh, explain you more about the Konkani language and, the, and uh, show or throw uh, light on the problem a bit more. All correction, I am not a linguist. I am a language facilitator, research facilitator. So, uh, the Konkani language is uh, one of the oldest languages of India, of Indo-Aryan or Indo-European family. And it's an official language of state of Goa of India. India, India has uh, several states and uh, Goa is one of the states. It's a smaller state. And it's also the language spoken by the people of Goan origin, which are, who are spread across the India and the world. And uh, the ethnologue puts the number of uh, total population of Konkani speaking people to 3.6 million in 2000. Census of India 2001 gives a figure of 2.5 million speakers in India alone, which who are spread across the four states. Konkani language is one of the 22 official languages listed in the Constitution of India. And uh, National Literary Academy of India has recognized Konkani for its annual awards. No. Uh, Census of India has observed that uh, uh, high degree of multilingualism among Konkani speakers. It has led to, you know, uh, the language speakers are more uh, you know, uh, affluent in other languages, so they uh, tend to go towards that language to express their 
uh, knowledge or write their knowledge also. But the traditional knowledge which is there in the Konkani language, which is not uh, expressed uh, in a common script, uh, hence the knowledge is not uh, transferring between the communities which are using different script but uh, speaking the same language. Now the knowledge in uh, Konkani is vast and uh, uh, th these are some of the uh, salient points of uh, the knowledge. Uh, the first available inscription ascribed to 2nd century AD and uh, Dautrina Kristam by Father Thomas Stephens is uh, in 1622 is the first published work in any Indian language. So this is the first published work in uh, India and uh, it is in Konkani. The oral version of uh, the epic Mahabharat in Konkani recorded in 16th century and Godde Ramayan, a classic folk narrative is still being practiced uh, today which is an uh, ancient uh, oral uh, narrative system, narrative uh, practice. And Hortus Malabaricus, a 17th century treatise on uh, flora of Malabar region in India uh, has been contributed very immensely by uh, the Konkani um, uh, Pandits. Pandits are the traditional uh, uh, doctors who are, uh, you know, uh, contributed uh, several species of uh, uh, the uh, flora uh, to this. In, and these uh, names are also recorded in Konkani in that uh, treatise. So the, this is the migration pattern of uh, Konkani people from Goa. Um, in last 500 uh, years, uh, the people have been uh, uh, spread across the region because of several historical reasons. And uh, uh, this is the way they have spread. And uh, each of the region has its own local language, which is dominant language. Uh, for example, the Kerala states uses uh, Malayalam language, and it, it, uh, it has its own unique script. And Karnataka uses Kannada's Kannada language, and it has its own unique script. Sim uh, similarly, Maharashtra is using uh, uh, Devanagari script, and uh, Gujarat is using Gujarati script. But here the literature which is uh, uh, written in Konkani is dominantly in Kannada script and uh, Devanagari script. These are the several writing system which uh, are used by uh, Konkani language. Uh, the top one is Devanagari which is uh, the dominant uh, script in India for most of the Indian languages or North Indian languages. And uh, the second one is Kannada script which is a state language of uh, Karnataka and third one is uh, Malayalam script. Apart from these three regional script, there is also because of the Portuguese uh, influence, Portuguese language influence, in Goa there are several people write in Roman script, they write the language in Roman script. And uh, this is the uh, Perso-Arabic script which is used by one particular community in two regions called Ratnagiri and uh, Bhatkal are used by Muslims and uh, they, they have their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, newspapers in this script and uh, Konkani language. So these are the four, uh, five, several script we use. And each script has its own uh, pool of literature. And because of la la lack of common script, the, uh, the literature is not, uh, you know, uh, read by other communities. Though they are speaking the same language, they are not uh, reading the other script, other language, other uh, literature in the other script. So, because of this, uh, there are some uh, uh, conflicts uh, uh, in official situation like uh, award uh, uh, in uh, literary award and uh, the state, uh, uh, you know, education in schools, which script has to be used and which script should not be used. So it has uh, taken a political color, you know, because uh, people are fighting for their own script rather than the language development. So language is, uh, you know, uh, taking a blow in the schools because of people are arguing for their own script. So uh, some more uh, technical uh, issues. Harip. The, the conflict situation is very important. Uh, uh, as we explore the solution because uh, the conflict is what makes us uh, explore the solution at the first place. It is quite interesting that uh, with, with all the scripts, with the, all the various scripts, there's, there's this situation where we can't drop any of those scripts. In any other situation, we could have just uh, persuaded the government or someone else uh, which is forming the standards uh, to uh, use just one script 
and uh, make do with that. But here, in this case, this is a century old, uh, uh, several centuries old uh, situation and we just can't or turn this around in, in uh, any uh, uh, limited amount of time or maybe per perhaps uh, ever. So uh, how do we find a solution for this? Is it possible through technologies? What uh, is the question that we asked ourselves when uh, Guru came to me about this? Uh, like I said, I work mainly on Kannada Wikipedia and this, this happens to be uh, one of the interests for me because this Konkani is also spoken in our state. So we, we just explored what could be done. While we were exploring this, while we were uh, exploring this uh, problem, while, while we were researching this issue and uh, finding out what, what can be done about this, we came across several things uh, uh, to be taken care of if we at all come, up, come, come from, uh, with a uh, solution for this in technology. Uh, appropriate solution in technology would be providing people with the, uh, or the users with the transliteration tool that lets them read the Konkani pages in their own script. That would be the most appropriate solution. It is possible with technology. They've done it on Show that to you. This is Serbian wiki. Uh, on Serbian Wikipedia, they, they, they do require to have the pages in uh, more than one script. They've done it on Serbian Wikipedia. And this morning, when I was uh, speaking to a Chinese friend of mine, he told me, he informed me that this has happened on Chinese Wikipedia as well. They have a transliteration scheme or a transliteration uh, uh, script that lets them transliterate between the simple Chinese and the traditional one. So that people who are using the traditional one aren't, uh, uh, you know, uh, forced to use the simple Chinese, or people who are using simple Chinese are not forced to use the traditional Chinese. So how can you post this? You click on this uh, link, you end up getting this uh, whole page in a whole other script. So something like this was being explored. That's what we were doing. But when we were doing this, we came across several other issues. like these, the orthographic ch uh, challenges uh, that we are facing with company language. For example, the first one, the letters on the left is, is in Kannada, the, the word on the left is in Kannada script, the word on the right is in Devanagari script. <laughs> what, you could, what you can observe there is, the, is this mark here, this one, it, it signifies something what we call halant or a break, a brief break, uh, when, when you're uh, pronouncing, pronouncing this word. Let me pronounce this for you. It's called how. And here in Devanagari, it is read, it is read as how, but it need not be how all the time. When, when you're using it in Hindi, you read it as how, but when you're reading this in Sanskrit, it is how. So there's another, uh, Swara or uh, uh, what do you call it, a wall added to this uh, word which makes it difficult for us to decipher. And there are problems like these uh, that run through the entire uh, set of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the formations we come across when, when deciphering the text for transliteration. There's another one called Aikunk and uh, the, the same problem there on Devanagari as well. And here, the third example, there's something called Ani. That's the, f well, the first word is in Kannada, and the second one is in Devanagari. In Devanagari, it is written as Ani. Oh. And there's another uh, uh, known, uh, sorry, another uh, old added there. So this is quite difficult for us to decipher when doing the transliteration. This is, these are the challenges we came across. Now, considering all this, how do we put up a solution with technology? One thing is, like, you can render the text in a different script. While rendering the text, you need to make sure that you uh, take care of all these challenges or all these issues that we are facing. Not just that, people want something more. In, this, in the case of Konkani or in the languages uh, that are facing issues like this, it's not just reading it in, the, in those uh, scripts, but also editing in those scripts. That comes the biggest uh, challenge. Now, Konkani is not just the only language with this issue. 
In India itself, we have more than uh, one language that is facing this issue. One very important language is Kashmiri. You know about the Kashmir conflict, you know about everything, but the Kashmiri language conflict itself is a uh, different thing altogether. Right now, the Kashmiri Wikipedia is split into half. One half is Urdu, the other half is Devanagari. So how do we issue, how do we address this issue? This problem, the, 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 this problem is similar to that as well. If we find a solution here, that would be useful for Kashmiri, that will be useful for another Indian language called Santali, Sindhi, and also Punjabi, and God knows how, how many other languages outside the uh, Indian uh, subcontinent. There are plenty of those languages that need this, this, uh, this solution. So we went uh, on exploring what could be done. Now, when it comes to editing, we'll need a server-side server -side tool which will capture the data that's edited, that's uh, typed on MediaWiki, uh, edit uh, text area, which, which is passed through an a engine or something. That, that's the concept we uh, had in mind. So it will transliterate all the data to some standard script, say Devanagari in this case, in, this ca in the case of Konkani, because Devanagari is the standard that, that is being used. Uh, the, the, the use of Devanagari is the standard, so maybe we could convert it to Devanagari and store it in the database in Devanagari, perhaps, so then convert it back to the user-preferred script. It's something that we were trying out. When we were trying that out, we, we did a lot of uh, trial and error. Uh, of course, uh, there are quite a lot of things to be done there. We need the development uh, support. Uh, yeah, all right. We need support from the development team, uh, from, from all of the MediaWiki community. We, we have a lot of challenges there. We are still exploring that. And here's where I would invite. Okay. The, 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 this is the uh, overall concept in so, so some way that I was explaining. This is the user. When he gets to, the user gets to read Wikipedia, the information on Wikipedia, no matter how the others have contributed, whether they've contributed in a different script or the script that the user is reading it in. But the whole thing is available there and is available in all the scripts that the user prefers. Now, this is where uh, I would probably, uh, this is a very good platform. In fact, Wikimania is a good platform to invite people who are interested about all this together and get the community to get together. So the road ahead is, is the community. The community is, uh, thinks that, yes, something needs to be done here to help all these languages. Please, please come ahead and uh, join us. Let's, let's do something for these languages. These are very good languages that, uh, uh, that ought to have Wikipedias of their own and uh, flourishing Wikipedias in quite some time. Now, uh, we, we've, been, we've been doing some outreach programs back home. Uh, we, we, were, we are also planning out a few more in the coastal region of uh, India, in Goa, uh, to uh, organize uh, Wiki academies to reach out to more editors and more developers. And then uh, we are planning some hackathon and then we're getting in touch with more researchers who, who can shed more light on the, uh, on the uh, actual problems that we are facing and also help out in uh, solving this. Of course, working with the foundation, if uh, uh, they, they, they've been positive till now, working with the foundation would be one more thing that would be. All right. So if you guys want to join in, please, please write us. Uh, this is our email. And uh, please join in. Uh, this is an interesting problem with, uh, which will provide solution for some of the nicest languages uh, in the world. So why not? Uh, please, please join in. Yeah. That, that is about it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, uh, we, it would have been very nice if uh, we, we, we had shown that now, but uh, t uh, tell you what, we've been doing a lot of trial and errors. Uh, uh, we, we've been doing quite a lot of things, and the development, uh, uh, the strength of development team right now is very limited. We are just two of the developers. Yes, true. Uh, right now, I don't have that, but I, I, I can. Uh, as we go ahead, as we go ahead, we will be announcing it on the list and every, everywhere. Once we we are up with that, uh, we we can probably work on that. Right. 
Oh, that's a good question. In fact, search engines is something that we've just yes. not. Uh, yes, the URL is the same. Yeah. It just adds to the problem. You know, the search engines will add to the problem and will make it more complicated. Yeah. I didn't get your question now. Can you repeat that for me, please? So, when you actually store it, right. rather than storing it all in the single <laughs> script, if you store it in whatever script was entered, so you have a mixture on a page, but the user would always see what they set in their preferences. So oh. it would always be transliterated and it came back. Well, that could be done, but uh, somehow it looks like a, a more complicated situation for well, me personally because. Yeah, so that's just, it's more complicated yeah. than a machine, but it isn't really. Right. Because the server doesn't care. Mm -hmm. The server's just storing UTF 8. And it means that the original text that's being typed is actually there. So if there's any noise in the transliteration, you're storing the pure version of what they're uh, well, this is a good point. In fact, uh, this this can be, can also be tried for some uh, some of the cases where uh, there'll be some explanation in some of the uh, in some of the script that cannot be translated immediately. We could we could just keep it as the uh, as the as the uh, temporarily available text. That that can be done, I think, and it it, it should be a good yeah, good point. Right? Yeah. Thank you for that. Sorry? Uh, yes, you have a question. Yeah, I have another question. You are converting everything to the library and converting it back to the current language, right? Uh, so that's the, the idea. That's the idea that we've been working around. Yes. But on the conversion, we should, if we convert directly, uh, if we say for Malayalam and Canada are the same family of languages, and you will have better conversion to convert directly than going to a different set of. Uh, no, uh, see, uh, one thing that I did not explain during the presentation is that all Indian languages are phonetic. So that uh, makes us makes our work a little, little no, easier. Unlike... Need not be, need not be. It's just transliteration. It's not uh, translation, it's just transliteration. So... Yeah. Yes, exactly. See, in, in Devanagari, at least we don't have the ligatures coming down. You know, the, the, the ligatures, the way it's used, you know, it's it's uh, far more normal than the way it's used in Kannada or Malayalam. There, there are uh, quite specific cases in Kannada and Malayalam. And in Kannada, at least, I. All right. Go. 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 Devanagari. Yes. So, a, any other question? Last question? If, if, if anybody has a question. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot.